Army veteran. Uh, well, always an honor to be on the radio with you, sir. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you, Doc. How you doing? Oh, good, good. I'm, I'm getting thinner because I'm not sitting down with you and Glenda for lunch and dinner every day. <laughs> we miss and love you too. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll, we'll we'll do something about that. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So anyway, uh, you've got some something. First, let me say this: uh, the WVON call in number is seven seven three five nine one sixteen ninety seven seven three five nine one sixteen ninety. Doc, you you uh, someone you got to introduce us with. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, th- mm-hmm. These are these are two really extraordinary gentlemen. Uh, the first one is Dr. Wayne Duffus, MD, PhD. He joined the CDC as an uh, Epidemic Intelligence Service or EIS officer in 2002, and was employed as an associate professor with the University of South uh, South Carolina School of Medicine Infectious Diseases Division, where he treated HIV/AIDS patients mm-hmm. in the Ryan Wright Clinic. Uh, he served yeah. as the medical uh, director for the STD HIV division and the AIDS drug assistance program from 2012 to 16. Dr. Duster serves as the associate director for health equity at CDC's National Center for HIV and AIDS, viral hepatitis, STD, and TB prevention, where he was responsible for promoting health equity efforts across the center uh, by increasing uh, collaboration and advancing the scientific agenda. Um, He also uh, was a senior medical advisor of the care and treatment branch of the CDC for the South Africa President's Emergency Program for AIDS Relief. Um, He uh, now uh, serves um, as a senior medical advisor in the Division of Global HIV and TB HIV uh, Prevention Branch. And he had graduated from Albert Einstein College in Bronx with uh, New York with an MD degree and a PhD degree in virology and cell biology and completed his residencies at Columbia uh, Presbyterian Medical Center in New York City uh, and had his training fellowship um, at the infectious disease at uh, Emory University School of Medicine, Atlanta, uh, Georgia. Uh, He's also published over 80 professional papers and Dr. Duffus is currently participating in the Division of Global HIV and TB special initiatives branch wow. mm-hmm. and uh, really incredible history. Uh, our second person is Joel Johnson. He holds a master's degree in education and is an executive vice president of Friend uh, Family Health, which is a uh, FQHC or federally qualified health care center and president of the uh, Human Resources Development Institute, HRDI, a subsidiary of Friend Health. He previously served as the Chief Operating Officer of the SOS Children's Village um, of Illinois, a boutique foster care and child enrichment organization, and now serves as the Director on the Boards of the Behavioral Health Consortium of Illinois and Illinois Health Practice Alliance, IHPA. Uh, he's married to Carla Johnson and the father of two sons, Khalil and Hassan. Uh, so that's the introduction of the two of them. Uh, he is deeply involved in behavioral health, and Dr. Duffus is involved with um, uh, looking at the, the issues surrounding SARS-CoV-2 virus, which causes uh, coronavirus disease 2019, mm-hmm. which is known as COVID-19 now. Right. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's a lot to that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Dr. Doc, Doc, Arnold. Who do we, who who yes. who should we ask? What? There's so much okay, that these yes. gentlemen. There's so much that these gentlemen uh, know. Yeah, they have a wealth of information. I know. And, yeah, and and one of the things that I'm working right now with, I'm in an emergency uh, agreement with the uh, Illinois Department of Public Health and serve on the Illinois State Board of Health. But one of the things that we're looking at are seniors, and uh, these. Seniors, we have a tendency to think about seniors as being part of uh, nursing homes or, you know, sitting quietly at home. But seniors are also business owners. Mm-hmm. They are veterans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're teachers kindergarten through high school sure. and professors at universities. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're faith-based leaders in churches, synagogues, and mosques across the country. Uh, so they have very, very critical roles in the restore, restoration of this country. 
and we cannot afford not to pay attention to them. So far, about 85% of the deaths that have occurred in uh, Illinois have been in people 60 years and older. And we have got to turn our eye towards them. There's a need for them to get vaccinated, which we'll talk about a little bit. But we should be uh, making sure that they get the kind of health care that they need. Uh, I'm going to start off with Dr. Duffus and let him uh, talk a little bit about the physical health of people. And then we can t uh, turn to Joel to talk about some of the mental health concerns we're worried about um, within uh, our state right now with the COVID, uh, COVID raging. That'll be great, Dr. Arnold. Go right ahead. Yes. Yeah, Dr. Arnold, you got, you, you're running this. Go right ahead. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Duffus, uh, maybe you can give us a little bit of a, a background on uh, why it's so important to do, uh, you know, uh, things like contact tracing, looking and testing, and making sure we understand where this virus is. Mm hmm Okay, sure. So, you know, uh, good evening, good afternoon, Illinois, and, you know, thanks. This means a lot to be on this program to share some knowledge and uh, it's a pivotal moment in our country's history, and so very timely indeed. So thanks and, to everyone. And thanks, um, for, thanks for being with us, Doctor. We appreciate it. Sure. So, you know, so with COVID-19 and contact tracing, as we know, contact tracing is a core public health activity. It's a hard job. It's intense. Mm -hmm. And it's based on having a relationship with our citizens. And it involves the process of, you know, supporting patients that we suspect or have confirmed disease. And the contact tracer works with the patients to help them recall everyone who they have been in contact with within a certain specified timeline. And the privacy of the patients, they're protected. The contacts are only informed that they've been exposed to a patient with the infection. They're not told of the identity of the patient who may have exposed them. And contacts are provided with education, information, and support to understand their risk, what they should do to separate themselves from others who are exposed, monitor themselves for illness, and the possibility that they could spread the infection to others, even mm -hmm. if they themselves do not mm -hmm. feel ill. So in terms of getting on top of the infection, eliminating the infection, contact tracing is an essential component and it's going to rely on a lot of cooperation between citizens and working with us in the public health sector. What needs to be done to make sure, you know, Dr. Arnold, I told this doc that, oh, oh yeah, this gentleman is the best. He can tell us all we need to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you know, go right ahead. So, you know, it's what's going to be required to break the chain of transmission. Um, and that's what we need to make sure that we don't have continuing large outbreaks. You know, we have certainly seen the impact on society as a whole. Um, you know, shelter in place, staying home, having businesses not reopen, having individuals being out of work, not gaining income. Mm -hmm. um, the psychological impact I mean, I myself, my first time being in Chicago and, you know, not being able to enjoy your beautiful city as much as I know can and probably should happen. Mm -hmm. So there are consequences. There are consequences for inaction. Mm -hmm. And w when you think of the people who are more likely to die from an infection, you know, it's, it's our parents, the elderly. Mm -hmm. And Certainly. so we yeah. ourselves, even though we ourselves might be get ill and recover, the possibility of the people that we could spread the infection to or were dear to us and important to us is something that we should think about as we're being asked to do these things that might make us personally uncomfortable. Sure. But this overall general well being is so mm -hmm. important to society and individually as well. So how how are we doing? I guess that's that's the bottom line. Everybody wants to know that, Doc. Well, it, you know, so I've been very impressed when I came to Chicago. I arrived here April 5th, and, you know, I, I, I figure all the gyms were closed, so I should walk to work. And there's only four people in the office. So we're all separated. I have more than six feet from each other. I wear a cloth face mask. And mm -hmm. I was just mm -hmm. impressed that I can see that many people on the road. Okay. And I was very impressed that even the people I saw, they had a face mask on. 
So I think the citizens of Illinois and Chicago have been very, you know, adherent to the recommendations put out by public health. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we've seen now a flattening of the curve and decrease in the number of deaths and hospitalization. And based on the data that we review daily, the government and the health commission has used that to assess that we're ready to move into, you know, our next phase. I just want to caution our citizens, though, that the reason we've seen this progress is because we have been adherent to the recommendations. We call them NPI, or non-pharmaceutical interventions. So that is mm. the wear your face mask, the yeah. you know social distancing, standing six feet apart. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the things that have contributed to the progress that we have made. If those things are not carried forward, we might see a backtracking of the progress. Oh, okay. And nobody wants to go back there. That's right. Nobody wants to go back there. That's right. So don't worry about feeling embarrassed having a face mask on. You know, your face is beautiful. We love to see it. But, you know, health (laughs) and the life of your your loved one. Your loved one is more important. It's much much more important. That's great. Yes. Dr. Arnold. What else do we need oh, yeah. to know? I'm not calling the number. Let me say this, 773-591-1690. Dr. Dr. Arnold? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, and actually, uh, Dr. Duffins is absolutely correct, making sure we still wear our masks, mm-hmm. uh, thinking about, you know, making sure we dis- you know, decontaminate environmental surfaces, continue to wash our hands for at least 20 seconds. Those things are standard, and we must keep doing those things uh, despite the phase we're going into. Uh, we're currently in uh, recovery phase three, according to the governor's plan, and actually we're doing, uh, they're doing a phenomenal job making sure that we're keeping uh, an eye on some of the things um, that we need to be doing. So I have to applaud the governor and also Dr. Zeke, who's at the Illinois Department of Public Health for what they're doing. So in phase three, uh, they're opening certain things like manufacturing, you know, offices, retail, barbershops, and salons. Uh, to the public with the capacity, uh, and then also making sure that people are still wearing masks in those situations and gatherings of 10 or fewer people are allowed at this point, and then face coverings and social distancing are still going to be the norm to make sure that we're uh, keeping on track. Um, uh, so also, you know, we have things going on with being isolated. So some people yeah. are also uh, having trouble with different uh, activities at home, those kinds of things. There's a senior helpline for the Department of Aging, and that is that toll-free number, and that's 1-800-252-8966. And also you can go to the AR, uh, ARP uh, site that has wonderful things. Both sites actually have a lot to tell you about uh, different resources that are available through the state and through uh, these agencies and, and through uh, AARP. Mm-hmm. Um, but also to report abuse, uh, to report suspected abuse, uh, financial exploitation, or neglect of a person 60 or older or an adult with disabilities ages 18 to 59, you can call the statewide 24-hour adult hotline. And this is the Protective Services Hotline oh, at one okay. 866 mm-hmm. Eight hundred one four zero nine. So with that, I'm going to move to Joel because Joel has been dealing with mental health um, issues within the community for many years and actually provides invaluable service to people. Great. So Joel, you can tell us a little bit about the impact of uh, COVID on mm-hmm. uh, people who are um, cu- currently at home. Dr. Johnson. I, I, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, Dr. Arnold. And, and, and thank you, uh, um, Mr. Kelly, appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Um, well, it, mm-hmm. a, as you all can imagine and, and maybe have experienced, uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has caused us, uh, as Dr. Dufus uh, indicated, to remain home. And so the feeling of isolation, um, the lack of, of human connection for many, uh, and um, just the level of anxiety around the unknown, I think, is pervasive across uh, uh, our country and, and internationally. Mm-hmm. And so uh, people are now more than ever very aware or of, of their um, hypersensitive, I should say, to their, their feelings and aware of this anxiety. And so, you know, the opportunity 
uh, to acknowledge feeling uh, afraid or or distant or needing a hug um, are things that we are very much attuned to across the behavioral health world. Also, uh, you, you may be aware of just uh, the reports that the amount of alcohol sold uh, as a, during this pandemic has increased exponentially. And so persons uh, um, uh, passing the time with a glass of wine or a bottle of whiskey, et cetera, <laughs> uh, we're very much aware in our field uh, of, of the need to pace ourselves, to make sure that we're getting exercise. As Dr. Duke said, he went out and walked. And so, you know, trying to encourage people to take advantage of opportunities to exercise at home yeah. or in the community, uh, drink water, eat vegetables. Um, um, these are all things that really contribute to our mental wellness uh, and our physical wellness. And so um, the, Dr. Arnold and I serve on a, a committee with the Illinois Department of Public Health around COVID-19 equity, and we're trying to make sure that we speak for communities of color and disadvantaged communities and, 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 and other uh, non-majority communities to make sure that we're addressing uh, their needs across the spectrum of, uh, of health care, um, that, that we're not just taking for granted the needs of one community over another. Um, but mental health, I will say that in, the, in, the, in, the, in our service to persons uh, who were already connected to our, our, our care, our show rate is higher, meaning people are not missing appointments uh, to the that's, degree that they were prior to COVID-19. But it also means that they're at home, they have nowhere to go, right? But the other <laughs> thing is that the, 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 the good news is we're able to gauge how they're doing. We're, we're, in addition to talking to them about whatever their mental health concerns were, we're also uh, doing screening to, to gauge their exposure to COVID-19. Yeah. We're checking on their symptomology. Um, are, yeah. Have you have you been exposed to people? Are you coughing, et cetera? So you know, I only I, I only problem, Doctor uh, Doctor Duffin, and and also uh, Doctor Johnson. Uh, we have uh, so many things to talk about. We're going to invite you back. You've given us some great information. All right. <laughs>